Sam. My name is Mikey Piff, and I'm I'm very excited because as we, I feel like 2023 is the year we can finally hit the ground running uh, on meeting a lot of people that we wish we would have met right before the pandemic. And one of those people is in the studio with us right now. Gracie Abrams, it is really nice to meet you. It's very nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we've I've been we've been listening to your music and following you since like 2019, 2020, and obviously, <laughs> you know, there was a, a chunk of time there where we where we couldn't do anything. And mm. um, I guess the to start would be it, was that almost a, a odd I don't want to say a blessing in disguise because it wasn't a great time, but right. it gave you a lot of time to work on your your craft and your songwriting, which. Yeah. If everyone goes and listens to Good Riddance right now, the album is really, really good. Thank you. You know, thank you. I mean, I think, I think, obviously, um, yeah, a blessing of guys. It's tough to, to to even remotely sugarcoat any of of those years, just because of how severe it was for all of us in a plethora of ways. But I do, I do feel like um, I know for a fact that I, I wasn't in a place where I, I, I don't think that the album. I don't think Good Riddance would have existed if I had not had those years to kind of do some personal work. So I think I'm very grateful that I even was lucky enough to to be working in a space where I could write from home and and kind of yeah I guess take the time to kind of uh, keep my head down a bit and hone in on the on the craft. But thank you for liking the album. Yeah, I mean, what would you have been doing if like we weren't stuck at home aside from like obviously going to school or? I don't know. I mean, I I, I cooked dinner for my family every night because I was I was in like definitely like a big uh, period of writer's block for a while. I think I went kind of numb as a result of a lot of what was going on in the world, and everyone coped with things differently. I was like, if I can't make music that I like right now, I'm gonna cook food for my family and brought them joy. So that was my pastime. I mean, that's fun because you you do share a lot of food and snacks and stuff online too. I appreciate food deeply for sure exactly why not and so one of the things that that i i guess you, that is very fortunate is that you get to, to collaborate and you've gotten to learn from a lot of amazing people mm. you know even just through the last few years obviously through osmosis with you know touring with olivia and obviously mm-hmm. working with aaron dressner on on this album who you know now is is because i mean i don't know that guy's schedule must be jam-packed at this point right? it's pretty you know nuts. or he's got a he's got like he's one of those people that has like the like four digit emails on his phone that he hasn't <laughs> gotten back to because that's how many people right you know want to want to work with him totally um but even to the people that you've worked with on your music videos and stuff like it, it this do you feel like almost like pinch me that you get to learn from such amazing people so early yes constantly i think like truly every day. I I think it's it's the luckiest thing to work in a creative environment where you're constantly in rooms with people that are have so much information and, and knowledge and wisdom uh in all these lanes that I I know nothing about that I'm so excited to learn about. Um there's lots of I think I've al- always been someone who's gravitated towards people that have a few years on me in general. Just I I feel like the conversations with growing up I was always more stimulated by like Older kids, older, you know what I mean? And now I just feel so lucky to to be in rooms with kind of these adults who I trust so deeply, who have been working at, at their art for sometimes, you know, like longer than I've been alive even. It's like this really amazing opportunity and I don't take it for granted. It's, it's yeah, the, I, there's like a, a very long list of, of kind of like little bits of wisdom that I've tried to write down along the way because I don't want to forget anything. It's also kind of rich and valuable. I mean, that's something you must have got from family or something because knowing that you should probably be around people smarter than you is is something you definitely don't learn until probably later in life, I would say, Mm. from my experience. Mm. You know, you always want to be around like people that are like you or have like-minded things or... Um, but pe- having people around you that challenge you and like force you to be better is is 100%. probably the least uh, appealing thing at, well, while you're younger. You think? I think so to some degree. Mm, I love it. Because it's hard. Yeah, but that's the whole point. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. All right. We're going to get to know Gracie Abrams more next on Sirius XM Hits 1. Hits one on Sirius XM. It's Mikey Piff. I'm very excited to finally be meeting Gracie Abrams. If you haven't gotten listened to her album, uh, Good and Riddance, and and her EPs and stuff before, it's really an amazing journey over the last three, four years, however long it's been. But, I mean, you've been posting music and little covers and little bits and pieces of things for, for like, 
I don't know, seven years now, mm-hmm. six years since you were in high school, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Was, how, was it what made it okay? Because it's very vulnerable to do it, but it seems like to you it's kind of natural. Yeah, I mean, I've just journaled forever. I, I journaled growing up, and it was kind of my my space to, to be as honest as I wanted to be without having to confront another face <laughs> ever. I think I I it definitely benefited my my songwriting and just my um, kind of love for narrative in general. But I think also on the flip side, there were lots of social anxieties that came from confiding in only myself. Um, but I I think. You know, performing live, that scared me to death. I, it was never something I wanted to do growing up. And, you know, I grew up with the Internet, and that's a weird thing in general. But I, I think when I, you know, got an Instagram account, it was kind of like this natural progression, having posted little things on SoundCloud before I was, like, allowed to have social media. I was, like, the last person in my grade to, like, be allowed to be on, you know, Instagram or whatever. And it was this natural, yeah, natural progression sort of, I guess, of, like... I'm writing songs in my room every second I'm in there, and I would kind of instinctively just post 15-second clips of, of songs that I'd write and then often, like, leave them. It was like this, like, uh, yeah, this reactive songwriting sometimes. What, so why, I guess the, the, the um, and come maybe an easier question would be, why music? Because, I mean, you've been surrounded by creative people in all different types of fields your whole life, you know, literally since you came out of the womb. Mm-hmm. What was it about music specifically that just was your identity? It just, I don't know how you decide. I don't think, I mean, it's not a choice, you know what I mean? I think, like, when you're drawn to something, it's like a, for me, it was just like a first love thing. I, I felt so... Um, like the older I got, just like I remember in elementary school, I started being aware that my mom was playing Joni Mitchell in the mornings on weekends all the time. And I, that was always true. But then there were moments like when I was like eight years old where I was like listening to, to River by Joni Mitchell. And I was like, oh, that actually like I, I feel like I can, I'm, I'm hearing her words now and I'm the, I'm internalizing that. And it hit me differently. And um, as someone who journaled forever growing up, I think I fell in love with the vulnerability in in a lot of these uh, often like female song singer songwriters who I I could tell so clearly were being just open and honest about their experiences and and their feelings in writing. And I, I could almost I felt like to me and I don't know if this is true for any of them, but it felt like that was their outlet in the same way that it felt like mine already just growing up. And, um, you know, I I think there was just nothing keeping me from doing it. So I just did it all the time, Um, but very privately. Like we had a piano in the house, which was a blessing growing up with like an instrument just around that I could tinker around with. And anytime anyone would walk through the house, I would stop playing because I'm like, I don't want anyone to hear me doing this. It's very like... It was just, uh, it was kind of like this secret a little bit. Um, Like, you don't want anyone to read your journal. Did they ever, like, stand, like, in the door where you couldn't see them just to, like, listen? You know, like, probably, but it was like, I don't know why. It was definitely, like, awful. (laughs) You know what I mean? Growing up. That's like a family thing where, like, they, like, uh, it's, it's, it is endearing. It's, it's beautiful to see someone kind of find something that they love and, and see it from the beginning and then. I would assume, like, friends, family, whoever now, they see what you're doing and the sense of pride is, like, it's got to be bursting. Well, I mean, that would be kind of them if true. I think it's like I, I was very lucky to to grow up in a family where the idea of making things, using your imagination to create whatever kind of art it may be. Like, my brother is an unbelievable illustrator. His drawings and paintings are... they're. It's the most beautiful stuff I've ever seen. And, you know, growing up, there was no one telling him, like, you, when you get older, you stop doodling. You know what I mean? It's the same way for me. It's like no one was well, that, telling Well, that's me. a lesson we need to learn, is that yeah. when you grow up, we should doodle more. <laughs> totally. Because... I think it's like to be an adult and to be able to have a rampant imagination and, and to let that manifest in whatever ways it does. I think that's the, the largest blessing, um, kind of gift in the creative realm that I feel like I have adopted from my family. So, so tell us, um, I mean, mean, this is, it's a, it's a large question, but working with Aaron Dessner, who, Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people, some people might know from the national, obviously, Uh, a lot of people know him from working with Taylor Swift on folklore and evermore. Um, 
and now you getting to work with him on Good Riddance. What, again, not a softball question, but also not a thing to answer quickly, like mm -hmm. learning from him, mm -hmm. someone who's so experienced and who so many people uh, admire, um, you know, going to his magical studio in like a, you know, how people describe like the, the forest and just yep. how it is. At one point, one, do you pinch yourself and then do you leave there going like, wow, I got so much better or immediately so much or immediately with every conversation. I mean, Aaron is now one of my best friends. He's like, he knows everything about me. You know, the, the, the process of making this album wasn't just we're going to the studio to write now. It was we're spending every waking hour, you know, together having conversations that would then weave their way into the songs that we made. And I think it's why the album is as kind of direct and um, kind of almost straight to the point as it is in, in many ways. And he is, I have been a fan of The National for well over a decade now. Like that, he, The National was a, a band that growing up I always felt drawn to, I think, because there's this like melancholy kind of darkness, but also a hopeful feeling under and under everything that they've made together and and that really resonated with me as a kid and and I think so to the pinch me moment was instant when I when I met Aaron when I started working with him but it was really like uh the the our relationship and dynamic working together is unlike anything I've known with anybody else and I think for both of us it's very particular and very specific and um you know, he, his his wisdom as an artist, a uh, producer, writer, is is equal to that. Uh, you know, as a, as a person and a friend, he's the greatest listener I've ever known. He's so genuinely there for the people that he loves and cares for and, and works with. And I think all of the music that comes out of Long Pond or any studio that he's kind of walked into is a testament to how rare of a person he is like there's I could t ramble about Aaron for literal years but um I think the the gist of it is that um the kind of generosity that he has as a collaborator allows for the artists he works with to dig deep within themselves and be as open and kind of raw as they are capable of being or want to be and I went into the studio to make this album with a lot of kind of big questions and formative, you know, early adulthood life decisions bubbling. And um, we kind of documented that throughout this album, and I felt 110% safe doing so the whole time. And um, so I just love him. He's, he's, there's, yeah, I've never met anyone like him before. It's, it's cool to some of the words that you use immediately evoke, like anybody who is, probably really good at their art is a good listener but is also generous like whether it's like a scene partner or uh you know the rest of your band the way you play off each other it has to be that that give and take and that's super clear mm. on this album but the, a lot of the stuff that you um you know we're, we're going to talk about it more because i also mm -hmm. want to talk about uh, this is what it feels like and just uh, all the other songs because i mean it's hard we just we can just rattle them all down because they're all you know i don't want to gas you up but <laughs> You know, again, everyone listening, like, just go spend time with it and mm -hmm. listen to it like two, three times. Because sometimes, like, as a guy, I'll listen to metal, melody and stuff first, that that old caricature. Right. And then you dig into the lyrics and the other stuff. And mm -hmm. we're going to talk more with Gracie Abrams next on Hits One. Hits One on Sirius XM. I'm Mikey Piff. Super excited to uh, be making a new friend in Gracie Abrams. Uh, very excited to, to see you live for the first time. Even more excited, obviously, for an entire stadium of people to be singing your songs when you open for Taylor Swift, which might, you know, make you poop your pants. Maybe, you 100%. know, hundred percent planning on it. That, so j exactly. So if you want to throw diapers on stage just for her, <laughs> do it now. Um, so the song that we're that we're playing right now, the album's called Good Riddance. Is is this is what it feels like? And without digging into what it's about, like tell us about cr at least how you created this one, because again, you know, Aaron Dressner. Long Pond Studios, upstate New York, magical forest, magical place. What what kind of was the right recipe for this thing to just to pour out? 
for this is what it feels like. Mm-hmm. Well, that EP was pre Aaron in a way. We had a couple. Sorry, songs. wait a minute. I, ah, song title. That's don't my worry, mess up. So I, 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 I meant. I know it won't work. I know it won't work. No worries. Brain, um, I literally. So for those as so for those watching and listening, I have like a long list of things here. It's true. There's and, a, there and, is a list, and I'm trying not to like stare at it to like kind of like go through like the things that I want because there's so much to talk to her about. No, so and then I looked and I'm like, no, that's an EP. Damn it, it wasn't the song title. So clear mistake on my part. <laughs> no, the song that we're playing is I know it won't work. I let before these things yes. I try and I go listen to like everything. In I no no order. you're you're so good at your job it hurts. I I just was I am. Also, my attention to detail is probably annoying for everyone I'm friends with. So, oh, for sure. Welcome to my. Literally, everyone circle. tried to walk into my office today while I was like re listening to everything. Like, just, and I, like, the way I do it is I'll like sit back in the chair and like stare at the ceiling or stare at the wall like I'm mm. on another planet. Yeah, and everyone yeah, yeah. comes in and probably thinks I'm like a wacko or something. And I'm Story just like, no, I'm life. just soaking it in. But <laughs> I know anyway. it won't work. Yeah, I know, I know it won't work. work. Yeah, I know it won't work. Um, how'd that come about? Um, that was one of the harder songs to write, not in terms of like the time it took or anything, but it, it's just a pretty brutal um, for me. It, it, it was tough to admit these feelings that I were, was kind of like putting down on paper for the first time, you know, before having said any of it kind of out loud to anyone else, you know, and, and there's a complete freedom in the studio with Aaron to say truly anything and everything that comes to mind like the I'm the least filtered I would say around him and and that I think serves the songs um in terms of detail and depth in that regard but also can physically like it's aching to to confront feelings that you maybe tried to ignore or push down for a while so that that song um well, I, I mean, the, yeah. I, I wrote words down that I, that mm. kind of like described everything to me because the whole album's like a lot of push and pull, right? Yeah. So in my head, and tell me if I'm wrong, I'm just pulling stuff mm. out of my butt, but like the songs can be simultaneously soft but also strong and also show a lot of growth and learning but also a lot of knowledge all at the same time, mm, um, which to me is just like, you know, again, when you listen to, to a song like I Know It Won't Work, you know, it's it's the whole like, you know, you want to be naive and be like, well, you know, I, let's give it one more shot. Or right. then you're like, but the but your brain, it's like the, you know, the whole brain versus the heart thing. Yeah, I think that the whole album kind of came from a, a place of having previously di- almost like dissociated from feelings to cope or to try to appeal to other people or whatever. And, and, and the album... Is, tr- is me t- trying to get better at honoring myself and, and, and being honest with myself about what I know to be true and not shutting off the kind of like oh, fire alarms internally that are really telling you something. I think as like young women, just women, we were raised almost to like have that feeling and be like, oh no, but I'm probably wrong or uh, that's crazy, right? And it, uh, I think... I'm trying to get to a place, as I hope we all do, where we are following our gut more, uh, listening to these gut reactions, and even if they're hard, especially if they're hard, following through with with what you know to be your truth, um, even if that means disappointing other people sometimes. So that's this song. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it's also okay to make mistakes. Fully. You know, that's another thing these days. It's like I feel like everyone feels the need to be perfect or something's going to happen. I'm like, mess up. It's, you know, that's, yeah. that's all you can do. And then you learn. Hits one on Sirius XM. I'm Mikey Piff, and again, super excited that uh, I've gotten the chance to spend some time with Gracie Abrams. I know you're super busy. You're on tour right now. Um, like we said before, you're going to be opening for Taylor as well, uh, starting in May-ish, right, I think? April. April. Literally, so soon. Yeah, I don't know. I, listen, I still can't believe it's March. Yeah, I don't believe anything is real. Yeah. Time is just like, after the last three years, I just don't, I don't even know how to comprehend it at this yeah, point. Yeah, you and me both. Um, we did ask on Twitter for some fan questions because obviously your fans, you know, they love you so much and they, they connect with what you've written because like, you know, like you've said, it's this, you're in your formative years and you're growing and at the same time, you're really, really smart and at the same time, you know, we all make the decisions we make when we're younger at the same time, and it's learning about all that stuff. Mm. Um, so one of the questions from all over the country we've gotten, we'll, we'll try to speed round this one. Okay. Because it was hard to pick. Totally. Um, I'll start with a fun one, mainly because I have a, a, a personal connection to this. What 
song do you think is Weenie's favorite on the album? And now, for those who don't know, Weenie is her wiener dog. Weenie. Oh, I literally miss him. Go, so go on her Instagram. It is so freaking cute. Weenie. What would his favorite song be? Weenie. Oh, and that's from, by the way, that's from uh, Adam Mary from Indianapolis, Indiana. Thank you for asking. I hope um, I pronounced that right. <clears throat> Weenie's favorite song. Maybe like, maybe like, um, I'm trying to think of like the way he walks, what I, the beat I would imagine him like strolling to. Maybe I know it won't work. He's kind of like, he's like slow sometimes, but then he like picks up. He's a waddler, a little bit of he a... He waddles hard. Perfect. I miss him. Okay. And I picked I pick that question mainly because one of my dreams in life is to have like, have a wiener dog. I don't have one, but I want to name it Frank, Oscar, or Nathan. <laughs> all since I was a kid. I maybe like, maybe I all three. I like Nathan. Right? You put yeah. a little tie on him or a suit? Yeah, Nathan. Okay, um, what song made you fall in love with music or want to make music? And that's from Sophie in Concord, New Hampshire. Oh, great question. Um, uh, you know, actually, just because we're on tour right now and we're playing this venue that I, I saw this show that like altered the course of my life, I saw um, Lord at the Fonda the week before Pure Heroin came out. And that show changed my life. Um, and ribs is the song I think that made me just feel like, uh, made me feel like, a maybe one day I could get on the stage and do it because I'd been writing music at that point for years, very privately. But there was a kind of like introspective and like introverted but like strong performance that she gave before I had ever heard that song, you know, anywhere else, and it really, it really changed me so so ribs is my answer by lord on pure Hero. okay um when you aren't feeling your best how do you practice self-love and that's from uh annie in pittsburgh oh man uh i always journal just to get the feeling down on paper first um and i don't know it's weird it's like i, I try to i try to talk to to people that i that i deeply love just to like have some kind of um communication with someone who isn't just me to like bring it outside of myself um i try to go on walks it's kind of like but there's it's, you also have to let yourself sit in that feeling i think sometimes but um try to eat a food that makes me stoked <laughs> okay well you know what on, on the on the food question because yeah. you are a bit of a foodie yes someone did ask and, and and i like to ask challenging food questions that i think really define or show the type of person you are okay what kind of bagel would you be? That's from Maddie, also in Pittsburgh. I think um, I think a toasted sesame with cream cheese. That's fair. Thanks. It's like a little combo of like, okay. It's like but... more mild than the everything. I do love an everything, but I don't think that's my personality. Okay. Yeah. All right. You know what? I'm going to ask a personal question because this one tends to stump people at times. Oh. What's your favorite? Pancakes, waffles, or French toast? Oh, waffles. Okay. Yeah, it's more texture. Texture, anything else? A lot of people use the whole, like, oh, it's got the little crevasses where, the, like, the that's syrup the, can hang out. That's the good thing. It's very efficient. It's an yeah. efficient... It's I a, think it's more fun, more to look at. See, I'm a pancakes type of guy because I like the fluffiness and the texture. I'm a texture dude. I appreciate it, but I'm just like, you can have soft internal waffles. A little crunch. on the. You know what I mean? True. I don't know. That's my today answer. Maybe tomorrow will change my mind. That's true. Okay. Um... Uh, Let's see. What surprises you the most from the crowd each time you perform? That's from Natalia in Toronto. Uh, um, I think sometimes I'm surprised because I feel so close to to my audience, and I genuinely feel so close. Like in terms of the, the they share their experiences with me when I put music out, which is so generous of them, and then. I feel like when I'm in the room with them, I'm like, oh, we're all, it's a reunion. We're all hanging out again. And then sometimes we'll do shows and there will be like such tears, which means so much to me. But, and then sometimes when I acknowledge the tears, there's like a shock factor. And I just think I find it sometimes, I'm sometimes surprised by it just because I'm like, I feel like we're so, I feel like friends with all, you know what I mean? So sometimes I'm surprised when I, remember like even though i we may have interacted online a million times before whatever it is i think there's like and i i do feel this way too like this this like oh my god you're a real person like there you are physical and real life. i just like i get, I get sometimes shocked by the 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 
outpour of emotion because all I want to do then is just r like pause everything, run up and like, you know, hug for a while. And I think it's sometimes this funny thing where you're in the cycle of a show and you're in the middle of a song and it's like how I'm just like tr trying to get better at compartmentalizing and be present with the music while also like <laughs> doing everything in my power to not like stage dive to hug someone you yeah. know well i mean at the same time like enjoy it because you can do that now you can see everyone's face because mm -hmm. as the venues get bigger and bigger it becomes more difficult it's obviously going to be hard in a stadium of I mean, like sixty thousand people listen that doesn't still a blessing real. yeah it's a wild blessing okay going back to the uh this is a very specific question mm -hmm. that i didn't get to scroll through everything for to find out the context but Maya from Chicago asks, what happened to your SpongeBob in-ears? Oh, well, so actually funny story. Um, in-ears in are what you wear when you're performing on stage. Yeah, they're like the headphones that are like molded to your actual ear canal. But um, I, they were back last show. We, I, we were playing in uh, the House of Blues in Boston, not last, two nights ago. And something happened with my newer ones. Um, they got knocked and completely kind of blew out so my old ones had to come back but your you your body grows and changes so my act my spongebob in ears actually don't fit my head the same way that they used to oh, okay. and it was this funny thing where i hadn't had them I've, i love them dearly for context i have these in ears and one of them my left ear is spongebob like doing the rainbow thing and my right ear is, is patrick in fishnets and stilettos and it's great uh but they don't fit my head the same way anymore they like really don't but I, I did get to have them back for a brief moment last show. There we go. It's just like the, the theme of the album, continued growth. It even <laughs> extends to SpongeBob in ears. Very true. Um, and the last one, uh, and this one is, is fun, again, because you, you constantly share stuff on Instagram and, and TikTok. If you could add one more song to Good Riddance, what song would it be? That's from B from Los Angeles. Oh, I can't answer that because they can't know. It's songs they don't know, and it's songs that they will know. They will know them. Well, that's what yeah. I figured. I looked at that. I was like, you know what? I'm going to ask it anyway, but I figure it's like it's going to be a song that's going to be on another album anyway. Maybe. It will come out. Okay. Yeah. But, but But you know when I said the one, like you have it in your head. I have a few. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, God, we, should, we could keep talking forever, but mm -hmm. if you haven't seen her on tour, go see her on tour now. Obviously, she's going to be opening for Taylor later this summer. Is there, I don't know, you're going to keep touring more later this year, next year? Or are you going to yeah. go make another album? Like, what's the plan? All of the above. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're touring through uh, pretty much the end of the year. And then, um, yeah, with Taylor all summer, which is a crazy sentence. And then uh, Europe, UK tour in the fall. And then, um, I mean, yeah, we made good riddance while we were touring last year. And that's kind of my plan again. So I've been writing and... I'm I'm just grateful that I'm allowed to do any of this at all. So thank you to everyone who has ever listened to my music because you know they're all the reason why. Mm. I guess I guess I should probably ask. This is probably you know how, how did Taylor ask you to go on tour? Is it because it's always either really <laughs> unceremonious, like you're in a room together, it's like hey, you want to go like go travel the world with me? Like okay, <laughs> cool. Or it's like a really cool text message or email where it's like hey, I would really love you to do this. Oh God, I mean you know as we all know because she is queen of the world and everyone is her biggest fan, but um, no one is better at uh, secret keeping and kind of these Easter egg things and uh, all of it. So um, it was very buttoned up, you know, heard through my agents. And the second that um, I did, I, I texted her immediately and within, I think, actually maybe maybe 10 whole seconds, um, she responded being like, that's so awesome. I, I I lost my mind. I still don't. I really don't know how to talk about it because until we're actually there, I will not believe that it's a real thing that um, I'm allowed to do. But I there will never be enough thank yous in the world to to express how grateful I. I mean I've I've I like she is the artist I grew up loving and admiring more than anything. So. It's a trip and a half, but hopefully, yeah, hopefully I don't pee my pants. We'll find out. If not, again, throw diapers on stage. Yeah, please th throw them. They no, actually don't, will. Don't, don't throw, don't don't throw, throw, throw anything on stage. on stage. Please. <laughs> Thank you. No huggies. No. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, gosh, did we did we miss anything? Um, did we? Miss I feel anything? like we keep talking for forever. But... I know. I'm like, did we miss any? No. I mean, did you miss anything? Gosh. 
I'm literally, I literally could just go down. And <laughs> like, how's your list look? <laughs> I mean, I, there's still stuff we could talk about, like some favorite bands and stuff. Like, I love that you covered the 1975. Cause oh, I'm, I'm obsessed with them right now. Still, yeah. For whatever reason, I'm just I really mean, obsessed. But yeah, they just keep doing it better and better and better. Exactly. All right. Well, you know what? It'll just leave us more stuff for next Absolutely. time. Absolutely. So, Gracie Abrams, thanks for hanging out. Thanks Thank for swinging you. by. And don't, don't forget, go check out the album Good Riddance. Listen to it like 50 billion times over. <laughs> and, uh, you know, by the end of it, you'll uh, love her as much as we all do here. Well, oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm a big fan of your show and very grateful for your support. So thank you. Thank you. 